Okay, hey everyone, this is Sea Witch Piper again. Uh, this is another uh, Rome Total War tutorial. Uh, today uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, using missile, missile troops, uh, predominantly archers and slingers, in combat. So I have my friend, um, my fellow clan member, uh, Sea Witch Tacitus, help me out to demonstrate some um, tips. So the basic, the first thing about using uh, missile troops, always have them in loose formation when fighting other missile troops, and you want to line them as much as you can. So the longer your formation is, the less uh, damage they'll take from enemy archers. So Tacitus has blocked his archers to demonstrate that's quite vulnerable. Uh, formation to have them in when under fire from missiles. So actually, the, the first thing is to try and get them as long as possible. Um, sometimes you have issues at the sides, it uh, makes them vulnerable to cav attacks. But in terms of taking damage from other missile troops, try and line them as much as you can. So that's the first thing. Okay, another tip when using um, missile troops, always try and attack the backs and the rear of enemy troops. And um, you can see this Praetorian Cavalry unit has turned its back, or has actually turned its side against my archers. They take a lot more damage um, when, they're not, when they're facing away from the archers. So try and always attack the rear or the backs. There's a few misconceptions about archers. Um, basically, both the regular and elite archers have the same amount of ammunition and they have the same rate of fire. Um, the, the elite archers have marginally um, better stamina and not that much more, slightly more stamina. But apart from that, they're, they're equal and Elite archers have a lot better stats, which helps them in uh, melee combat as well. And they also have slightly better morale, and I'll talk about those things uh, later on at the end of this battle, at the end of this uh, tutorial rather. Auxiliary archers have better range than regular, they have better morale. So to make auxiliary archers pay off, you have to be able to use the distance um, so you want to move them back. When you allow regular archers to attack your auxiliary archers, uh, you're giving the advantage to the regular archers because for the price uh, they're better than auxiliary archers. If you look at the um, unit stats and uh, you look at the defense stats, you have a total defense stat and then you have a stat for armor a stat for shield and a stat for defense defense skill. Troops that have that base most of their defense uh, total on defense skill are more susceptible to arrow fire. And also, when you look at the shield, these troops um, hold the shield in the left hand. So when you fire in this direction, you gain more shots because the shield isn't they're protecting the soldier. So if you always fire to the right hand side, you nullify the shield. Urbans have pretty good armor and they have a shield, so they're not that susceptible to um, arrows, but other um, factions are, for example, Seleucid pikemen, the shields are quite small and they don't have that good armor, so they're quite susceptible. So we can see we're getting good kills in the flanks there, of the urbans. Another thing to, um, I'm using flaming arrows here. Archers have the option to use flaming arrows or regular arrows. And there's pros and cons for each one. Basically, in a nutshell, you use flaming arrows to weaken the morale of the enemy. So what you would do is you would use normal arrows at the start to get the kills and use flames at the end to get um, a route. 
So you'd only really ever use flames if you think you can get the right from it. Um, fire arrows aren't as accurate as regular arrows and they take a lot longer to reload. Again, you can use peasants in the center as arrow fodder and essentially you want to shoot um, you want to avoid shooting the peasants and shoot the archers because these peasants are expendable um, if they die it's actually a job well done they've done their job unfortunately you want to keep your auxiliary archers back out of range um, one versus one uh, Roman archers uh, regular uh, beat auxiliary archers so you pay for the range with the auxiliary archers so you want to keep them back and you want to close the gap as much as you can if you don't have auxiliary archers another thing is if you're in a position to get the first shot in uh, it makes a big difference in terms of winning the archer war if you can get um, the first kill it gives you an advantage throughout the rest of the battle so always try and make sure you get the first kill in you can see here um, the players playing with uh, Malta has actually brought the chariots in for an attack and we're using the flaming arrows to try and make them route so we can see they're getting targeted by the, the arrows and one of the chariots just routed there and the other one just routed there so when these chariots rout, they cause a lot of damage to their own troops when they run into cavalry and uh, infantry. They'll cause probably just as much damage to themselves as they would to the enemy. So if you can get that, uh, use your, your flaming arrows to get the, the chariots. Uh, it's always beneficial and you can see there um, some of Atta's troops just get taken out by the chariots. Okay, I said before in this tutorial, um, it's usually a good idea to put your archers into loose formation when you fight other archers. However, sometimes it's a good idea to keep your archers in tight formation. Uh, when they're in tighter formation, uh, when the arrows are more bunched together when they hit the target, so they tend to be slightly more accurate. Um, so that's a, that's a benefit of keeping your archers in loose for, uh, tight formation. They're slightly more accurate, so when you take uh, shots against uh, cavalry or other targets, uh, they're slightly more accurate. And also, um, archers in loose uh, tight formation, they're a little bit easier to manage as well. Uh, you can see in this battle, Atta is controlling the SPQR army. He's able to pull his archers out quite fast. Also, the best way of using archers is try and target um, enemy archers and enemy cavalry. Cavalry um, is very susceptible to archers, so always try and attack cavalry um, if you can with archers. And this is a perfect example here, um, Atta protecting his archers with the cavalry and using the archers to target the enemy cavalry. And again, we talked about um, flames versus normal. And you can see my archers attacking the enemy cavalry with flames. Flames tend to um, have a flames have a lot a slower reload time, and they're not as accurate. Uh, when you fire flames at uh, cavalry. It tends to be very f effective. Uh, cavalry tends to depend a lot on the charge, and if you can flame cavalry before they charge, they're already panicking because of the fire attack. So that's another, another tip there. Uh, try and flame cavalry before they charge, or during the cavalry battle. Okay, the second part of this tutorial is basically talking about uh, slingers. Uh, that's the other missile troop. Uh, that you can use in multiplayer that's basically classed under CWB's uh, missile so slingers um, in a nutshell 
Uh, they have a shorter range than ar archers. And they can use flame. However, uh, one versus one against archers with blessed denarii as well, they beat archers. So if you can close the gap with the range and get shots in with the slingers, they are more powerful than archers. And they're cheaper as well. A second thing about slingers is they have more ammunition. So they actually will win the skirmish fight. Uh, it's just that range issue you have to worry about with slingers. Um, you can have archers pulling back and it would mean that the slingers would not be in range. So they're definitely cheaper for the price. So exactly like uh, archers, uh, slingers have elite class of slingers. These are called, uh, they can be Balearic slingers or, or, or Rhodian slingers of the Greek army. Essentially, um, they're slingers that have greater range and better stats. So again, like you'd use auxiliary um, archers, you're paying for the range with these slingers. And unless you can exploit this range advantage, uh, they're not worth the money. Because one versus one, uh, the standard slingers beat the um, elite slingers for less than that as well. So you really want to be either using uh, the slingers, the range advantage, or you might have another purpose, for example, taking out horse archers. But you really want to be exploiting the range with elite slingers. And you can see um, these are these guys just getting destroyed here. So I should also point out that slingers differ from archers in the sense that they throw straight forward as opposed to firing over. Which means that you can actually kill your own troops if you put your slingers behind uh, any friendly troops. So if these guys were to fire, they might actually kill uh, some of my own troops there. So that's actually a disadvantage. But the benefit is that when they fight uh, units such as horse archers that go round and round in the Cantabrian circle, they actually get, they actually fire through. And instead of an archer would fire over and hit horses, they would actually fire through and get kills, get, get a lot more kills. So that's one of the benefits of using slingers against horse archers. So in this uh, in this example here, it's actually my my friend Tacitus from CH Clan, my fellow clan member, uh, demonstrating this. Um, the idea is to basically run your peasants forward because the horse archers are set to skirmish, and as soon as they come out of a uh, Catabian circle, the slingers will get shots in. So the peasants are running forward, and because the horse archers are in skirmish mode, they actually run back because they're too close to the enemy, and that break there allows the um, slingers to get shots in, uh, to get kills. So it's a good strategy to use. Um, slingers are really powerful against uh, horse archers. So this combination of basically expendable troops and possibly quite cheap uh, phalanx as well with slingers can really uh, damage uh, horse archers so again we'll do this again slingers are getting shots in and they're not actually getting too many friendly kills peasants are running forward with the pikes uh, to support and when the peasants get closer they'll break from Katabian circle just right there and that will enable uh, the slingers to get better shots in so that's a good strategy when using slingers versus horse archers missile troops are very vulnerable to cavalry so that's why you need to have good cavalry to, to defend your own uh, missile troops uh, light cavalry especially just destroy um, missile troops so always make sure you defend uh, missile troops with cavalry or suitable infantry 
and you can see here um, this is a rush here a uh, buffalo soldiers pushing forward his uh, legionnaires there to try and uh, drive back the Bolaviac slingers another thing to remember um, when the slingers are running they're not firing and they're getting tired as well so rushing a skirmish based army is a uh, quite effective strategy and now it's really down to a case of how well um, Tacitus can micro the retreating uh, slingers and he's one of the best players in the game and he's pretty good at this um, so you can see here he's pulling back his slingers cavalry is defending and pulling, pulling back slingers there and pulling back slingers there obviously uh, you can't micro perfectly everywhere you get caught in the middle but when these troops come in they'll get shot on the side and remember what I said about the shield when these slingers shoot at the side there they're going to gain a um, quite a good advantage quite a lot of kills there okay um i've created this uh, chart here um not all archers are the same and not all slingers are, are the same um archers have greater range than slingers however slingers have more ammo than archers uh, if you look at some of the stats here, um, you have uh, I've in the chart. There's range, ammo, base morale, lose regain morale, and training. Um, archers are renowned for having low morale. Uh, it doesn't take much for them to rout. Uh, so they have base morale, which is four. For that's the regular archers. And lose regain morale, uh, that's when they rout. And that's basically, uh, that's how fast they lose the morale and how fast they regain morale after coming back from routing. I got all this information from the data files. And you can see from the chart, Eastern Archers, they have the lowest morale or the lowest uh, lose regain morale of all the Archers. So when they route, um, it takes longer for them to regain their morale than it would do for, for example, Roman archers. So that could be that could be an that could be a big disadvantage uh, if you can gain a mass route against the eastern factions. It takes longer for the archers to regain their morale. Uh, Roman archers are the same. Uh, the Barbarian uh, Warbands are the same. All the, the bog standard uh, archers are the same, except the Eastern ones, which have a low uh, lose regain morale. Uh, training here, uh, that's another, uh, that, that basically uh, determines how tidy the unit's formation is. Uh, if they're very, very uh, disciplined, well trained, uh, they'll, be, they'll, be, uh, they'll have a better formation. And you can see, um, even though Eastern Eastern archers are, uh, they have a low uh, uh, lose regain morale stat. Uh, they're pretty well trained. Uh, if you look at the slingers, um, as I said before, they have less range than archers. Um, however, they have more ammunition. They and they have the same uh, base morale as the archers. And they're all, uh, they all have untrained formations. Uh, the difference within slingers, uh, the British slingers and the Eastern slingers, and the Eastern is, is basically Persia, Armenia, uh, all those sorts of um, factions. They have low lose regain morale, as opposed to the Carthaginian and Egyptian slingers which have uh, a better uh, lose regain morale basically goes um, low normal and disciplined if you look at the next section um, this is the elite uh, slingers uh, we have the Balearic slingers um, they have the same range as the regular archers 
And again, they have more morale. Uh, they have more ammunition. But they have far better morale than the archers. And better morale than the regular singers. They also have better uh, lose-regain morale. So they can regain... It takes them longer to lose morale. And they'll regain their morale faster. Uh, the Balearic Slingers have a slightly uh, worse formation than the, the Rhodian Slingers. I've never really understood uh, the actual meaning behind the formation. It must give some sort of advantage uh, within the Archer battle. And lastly, we'll look at the Elite Archers. And the Elite Archers have greater range than the Irregular Archers, Slingers and Elite Slingers. You can see the range is uh, 170 on all of them. And they also have 30 for ammo, which is the same as the regular archers. Um, you have the Roman auxiliary archers. Uh, they have the same morale as the regular archers, uh, four. However, they're disciplined, which means that it will take them longer for them to lose their morale than the regular archers, and they'll regain faster. And they have a trained formation as opposed to untrained. Um, we have the Cretan archers, which have the same stats as the auxiliary archers, 170 range, 30 ammo. However, they have better morale, they have a better morale base. So that's essentially the, the morale that they start with. Um, they're not as good uh, with the uh, lose morale, lose regain morale uh, feature there. So they're they'd be more inclined to route than the Excelled Archers, they're not as disciplined, but they have a better formation. Next we have the Chosen Archer Warband. Uh, same stats as the Cretan Archers, except they have a slightly worse formation. However, in melee uh, they're better because they have a sword as opposed to a knife. The next uh, elite uh, archer is the Pharaoh Bowman, Pharaoh Bowman, or Pharaoh Bowman rather. Um, same stats, uh, 170 range, uh, ammo 30. However, they have a, a base morale of 10, so they start off with very good morale, and they have uh, they're disciplined as well, which is the same as the Roman auxiliary, and they're highly trained. So the Pharaoh Bowman are possibly the best archers in the game. We have the next, um, the, the, la the last elite archer, the Forster Warband of Gaul. And these guys are very expensive. However, they're very, very good. Um, not good for the price, relatively speaking, in terms of other archers. But they're, they're very, very good archers nonetheless. Uh, again, 170 range, 30 ammo. Uh, however, they start with 12 base morale, which is the highest uh, morale of all the archers. Uh, they're only normal uh, for the loser again morale, so they're not as good as the fearable men, and they're untrained. But they do get a spear bonus, which helps them against uh, cavalry charges. However, when you compare them to fearable men, uh, I personally think fearable men are better than the Forster Warband just for the price and the fact they're actually disciplined and have highly trained uh, mm. training. This player is using flames uh, for two things there. Uh, the chariots have came in for an attack. He's using flames to try and, and make the chariots run amok. But also uh, flames give a good advantage uh, in cavalry battles. Uh, it weakens the cavalry, uh, causes panic and it can give the edge in the cavalry battle. So using flames like this is always a good idea in a cab battle. Gives you the advantage. Um, another thing to uh, watch is when archers fire, um, they could be stationary, but they still uh, tire. So when archers are fighting, uh, even stationary, they, they tire. So the more they fire arrows, the more they tire. So that's something to watch. Um, when it comes towards the end of a battle, um, archers are usually fairly tired because they've used up all of their um, arrows. So 
the morale was very weak towards the end. And if you look at this example here, again, this is the battle I played uh, last night. Um, the arch wars happened, and the archers are very tired, exhausted on the enemy side. So all these guys are very, very tired. And my cavalry's ran in, and at the start of the battle, they would have caused some damage, but they're just routing as soon as the cavalry hits. So, so archers are very vulnerable uh, towards the end of the battle when they become tired and their morale weakens. So that's something to be very careful of. Um, so it's very possible for these route, these archers to get routed straight off the field. Uh, there's, out, there's archers over here as well. Uh, these are Cretans but they're actually fresh. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, archers at the end of battles are usually very tired and, and exhausted. So basically that, that's the end of the tutorial on uh, missile troops, predominantly archers and slingers. Um, hope you've enjoyed this battle. Uh, rather, hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe. It always helps my channel if uh, you guys can uh, watch the video and like it. But again, thanks, thanks again for watching. Uh, hopefully you've learned uh, a few tips and tricks there. Uh, some good information about um, the morale stats of archers and slingers. So this is C H Piper uh, signing off.